Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our last day of Forms Viewer Training. We are very excited as we have a lot of interesting labs that we are going to tackle for today. And Patrick will be showcasing our highlight for today, which is the Forms Viewer Designer. He will be joining us at the end of the at the end to demo the designer and for those who were not able to join the previous trainings don't worry the recordings are available in youtube for you to be able to go through and watch what features we unveiled in the trainings i also uh, want to remind everyone that you can access our course directory which um, let me share our course directory there we go so here we go. So the course directory contains all the labs included in the October Forms Viewer Training. So you can select a lab. And when you open it, you can see the overview, the what you need, the benefits uh, regarding that specific lab. And um, it uh, a download button is also included where it opens up a Hightail link where you can download that lab's package. And in those packages, we have included uh, a document, as you can see. Uh, in those packages, um, we have included a document showing the step-by-step -step process of achieving the features to your forms. We have also included there the starter and end form, which you can use as an exercise for the lab. So this is available for everyone. And if you encounter any troubles with accessing it, just shoot us an email and we'll gladly help you out. So um, before proceeding with the demos, let's have a quick refresher. Let me go back to our slides. So let's have a quick refresher on what were discussed yesterday on our day three training. And if you know the answer, please don't hesitate to speak up. All right, so first question is, what other features does DBXL support aside from mapping form data to SQL? Um, Curvy, can you share what other features does DBXL support? Yeah, good morning, everybody. So. Uh, aside from mapping your form data to SQL, uh, DBXL also supports notifications um, using a PDF rendering service and um, email mappings in the uh, DBXL admin tool. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Curvy. That is correct. DB DBXL is not just for submitting forms data to your database, it, it also has a notification feature. So our second question is, what is the difference when using workflows in Power Automate and DBXL? Um, let's see. Hi, Joanne, can you answer this next question? Yes, good morning. So with Power Automate, you can add workflows using a more graphical designer. So the SharePoint design, the Power Automate, uh, it's really nice, uh, the UI that you can use there. And Flow can offer many features like connectors to a lot of web services or APIs. But if you, your form only has a simple workflow, you can just use DBXL and it has a simple uh, graphical UI for adding your email mapping, but it's, it's less cost than Power Automate because Share, SharePoint Online charges per user per month. Uh, so if you're getting only the free license with Power Automate, the drawback is that you will not get instantaneous email, but if you get premium, then there's added charges there. And DBX, DBXL costs less because we charge annually and there is no cost for querying SQL. So that's it for number two. Thank you, Joanne, for such a detailed information of the difference between Power Automate and DBXL. Um, so our last question, let's move on to our last question, which is what benefits can you get when you apply central flow XTP to your form? So let me go ahead and answer that. 
you can add approval feature in your forms in just minutes. That's just by adding the central flow XTP to your forms. And this XTP has a lot to offer because there's a dashboard for easier monitoring of forms assignments. You have the workflow step table where you can add all of the steps in your approval process. It has a locking feature, an authentication feature, and even user proxies. So with central flow, you can achieve such a power full approval process to your form. So uh, thank you everyone for, for, for answering for answering our refresher for day three reviews. And um, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, discuss ways to extend your forms with the new features. So what uh, will you be expecting for today? So for lab one, Curvy will demo the auto log out users. And then for lab two, I will show you how to apply and open links via button. And then for lab three, uh, Joanne will discuss regarding the auto refresh queries. And of course, we don't want to overwhelm you. So we'll be having a quick break. And then after the quick break, we'll proceed with a feature called the limited list, which will be demoed by Joanne. And for our last lab, Curvy will show you the limited uh, text box character. So we are very excited to show you these new features. Um, Curvy, are you ready for lab one? Yep, ready. <laughs> so let me just stop sharing so you could share your screen. All right, thank you, Yesha. So I'm going to start uh, to share my screen. All right, so, um, so I'm going to uh, demo uh, tab one, which is uh, the auto log out feature. So for those of you who have watched movies or series in Netflix, I guess you're familiar with the screen prompt that appears when it detects that you've been inactive after a period of time that says, are you still watching? Well, we've built a similar feature that you can apply in your forms. So this is one of the features that are made possible by one of the custom heroes commands that uh, Jimmy has built, um, our forms viewer developer. Uh, which is the custom schedule refresh that periodically triggers an action in the form. So custom heroes command is actually new to Forms Viewer 5.2, where you define customized heroes command using JavaScript. You can use a custom heroes command um, we built for you, or you could also build your own. And the and probably the most appealing benefit of custom heroes commands is that. You can add new features to your forms without waiting for the next forms we were released. So that's just a quick um, uh, intro about custom heroes command. So let me go ahead and demo uh, demo the end form for the auto log out features so that, I, so that I can show you how it looks like. So this is the same form that we have um, uh, seen with the previous days, the end of day report. And let's add some values in here, just random. <laughs> I'm typing random values. Um, because the form will check every 10 seconds if there are any form changes to trigger the auto logout feature. But yeah, in a few seconds now, there should be a prompt uh, that will show up. So let's wait for that prompt. Um, yeah, there we go. So if the user, so it says your session will expire in 10 seconds. So if the user clicks the button there, it will cancel the auto logout and auto save feature. But if the user is unable to click the button, which means that the user is inactive, the form will proceed to log out the user and save the changes, which means it will automatically be saved to the form library, which has just happened. So that way the user can open the same form again to continue adding data to the form. So if we try to um, go to our uh, site contents and go to our EOD 
report library here, you'll see that um, there's uh, we have submitted uh, an XML reform there a few seconds ago. So that's because of the auto logout feature there. So we have developed this feature because there are chances that some users leave the form open with unsaved changes. And um, there are forms that can only be accessed by one user at a time. So we want to make sure that we don't let an inactive user lock the form so others will be able to access it. And with this feature, we also prevent unauthorized access. For instance, when a user walks away without locking the device from, from which the form is open. And lastly, if there are unsaved changes in the form, the XTP or the auto logout feature um, includes auto saving to prevent data loss. So now I'm going to show you how to add this feature in the end of the report. So let me just go to my local folder here. I've already uh, downloaded the package from the course directory. And in the package, we have the end form and also the start form. And of course, the auto logout XTP or the reusable template part that you can just add in any of your forms. So let's go and uh, open the starter form. And here's our end of day report. And go to the control section. Again, we've already demoed this in the previous uh, days of our, our training and I've already uh, added the auto log out there, but let me just remove that for now and add it again. So you'll see the steps on how to add a template part in your form. So uh, select the template part, which is the default um, selection there and browse for our XTP. So, so this is the one, the auto log out, click finish, close, okay. And then it will automatically be added in here. So let's try and just um, add a cursor in the form canvas here at the bottom of the form and click auto log out. And you'll see here that um, the sections for our XTP uh, has been added. And these are the sections that are being showed uh, for the prompt um, in our form. And also the instructions are also um, included in here. So um, the next thing that we need to do is to go to uh, finish loading node um, in Cadaver rules. And you have here the Cadaver rules secondary data source. Go to finish loading and run um, auto log out here. So let's rename this run auto log out. Auto log out. All right. So let's set a fields value and find the auto log out um, secondary data source, which is the XTP logic underscore auto log out, and go to the actions group and click the run on load, give it a value go. So all of the values or all of the rules under that node will run when the form is opened in the browser. So all of these rules will be executed upon, uh, upon on load. So after doing that, after adding the rule in the finish loading, let's go ahead and change the, um, temporary commands or temporary fields in here to point to the actual uh, cadaver rules commands. Again, we've already um, uh, did the same steps in our previous uh, labs. So I'm just gonna try to do the same thing again today. So let's go to this set key rules fields edit rule uh, in the temp command node under the key rules temp group in the XCP logic. Uh, secondary data source. So click the first action there and replace the stop node with the actual cadaver rules command node. And then lastly, let's add the cadaver rules result node in here. Click function button and go to cadaver rules, select the result node. All right. So after that, uh, we're going to the uh, save node in here. 
and we're gonna disable this uh, rule in here that says set form name and um, submit to library because um, we already have that uh, rule in our form. So let's just um, disable this and we're going to add a new rule to run our submit uh, rules because in the form logic of our form, we already have a um, submit node in here where all of the rules like uh, setting the form name, setting the status are already in place. So let's go back to the XTP logic for the auto log out and go back to the save node and add, add a rule to run those submit rules. So just renaming it to submit and set a fields value again, go to our form logic and select the submit node and give it a value code. All right, so um, that's it for, for con uh, configuring the XTP in your forms. So uh, let's see, I'm gonna try to check the run on load rules here and explain to you real quick what it does. So we have here, of course, the um, overlay, um, overlay CSS and JS file. And in here we have um, set refresh seconds. So we're setting, uh, um, by default, we're setting 150 seconds uh, in the refresh seconds uh, field in here. So this is where we set the time on how often the form should check for unsaved changes. So, so that by default, it's uh, the value is 150, but you can customize that and make it just like, uh, like what I did in the end form, I added there just 10 seconds. And every time, and it will check uh, for unsaved changes for every, every every 10 seconds. So in here, in the next rule here where it says timer show prompt, um, this is where we can change the allowable period for inactivity. So uh, in here we have by default 300 seconds and for the third rule here, where it says timer show log out, um, this is where we specify how long the prompt should show. So it will, uh, by default, it will show uh, for 60 seconds or one minute. But again, I've, uh, in the end form, I've changed that to only have 10 seconds for each of this, um, each of these rules in here. So next, um, the next rule is, uh, actually loading a resource called refresh.js. This is the JavaScript behind the custom curls command, which is called the custom schedule refresh. So this uh, custom schedule refresh actually um, refreshes or it uh, repeats the rules uh, in in the refresh item node in our XTP logic um, secondary data source. If we go to that refresh item node, you'll see, there we go. So every 10 seconds uh, in our end form, every 10 seconds, this will uh, be, um, this will be executed. So that is why, um, yeah, the auto log, auto log out feature works. Uh, because of that um, custom curos command that I just showed you there. Uh, where is that? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's in the run on load uh, where we are triggering the refresh. So, yeah. So that's it for, for, for our auto log out demo. So I hope that is clear. You can, again, you can, uh, apply this XTP or a reusable template part to any of your forms if you'd like uh, the auto log out feature or the auto save feature to be added um, to your uh, forms. All right, so um, 
I guess uh, back to you, Yesha. All right. Thank you, Kirby, for showing us the auto logout feature wherein it automatically closes the form and saves any unsaved changes made when the form detects that the user is inactive. So uh, what a cool feature. Now, um, let me go ahead and proceed on to the next lab. And let me share my screen first. There we go. So for lab two, we are going to show you how to apply and open links using buttons, so which is actually not built in into InfoPath. And you've been seeing and using that feature from our course directory, which is the download button, uh, wherein when clicked, it opens up a new tab uh, with a link to Hightail for the lab packages. So as you can see, I've clicked the download button and it directed us to the Hightail link for that labs package. Now, um, so let me open up our end form and show you what we are going to try and achieve uh, for this lab. So, so let's open this. So this is uh, our end of day report. And I've added uh, two buttons at the information overlay. So, and the scenario is if uh, your supervisor is asking for a more detailed EOD report. So I said here that you can use the file attachment, uh, this uh, field uh, to upload a report document. So we've we included here that below is a link where you can download the end of day report format, which includes uh, sections for uh, a more detailed uh, EOD report. So as you can see here, we have um, uh, two buttons, which is an open in current tab and open in new tab, which is very straightforward. So you can open uh, a link, the link in the current tab, as you've seen, it opened it in our current tab, which is our end of day report format or a template. And let's go back and try to click uh, the other button, which is to open it in a new tab. There we go. So we do have two options uh, in opening a link via button. So it's opening it uh, in a current tab and a new tab. So uh, let's try and do this and uh, open our starter form. Um, in the package, let me just uh, discuss that uh, what's included in the package for this lab is the starter form, the end form that I've shown you earlier, uh, a lab document that uh, uh, shows the step-by-step -step process of adding the uh, open uh, links by a button. Um, and then we also have a JavaScript file, which is uh, why we have the option to, which gives us uh, the option to open it in a current tab and a new tab. So that's because of the JavaScript file. So let's try and open our starter form and click design. So let's first um, wait for it to open. <laughs> All right, now that's it. it's open, let's go to data and resource files and let's try to add uh, the JavaScript uh, that I showed you earlier into our form. So let's go to uh, the package. So this is the open URL command JavaScript file and let's add that to the resource files and click okay. Now, once that's done, uh, let's go ahead and add the two buttons. So let's first uh, go to the section of the overlay, which is this, and let's go to home tab and expand the controls and click the button. Now, um, let's rename this to, let's go to button up uh, properties and let's rename this to open in current tab and click apply and then okay. 
Now, once that's done, let's go ahead and add an action to this button. So let's go to home and click manage, re manage rules for us to see the rules. Um, and then um, let's go ahead and add a new action. Uh, I forgot before adding the button, let's go and add first a new field in our main data source. So in our main data source, let's go and add a new field. And let's just call this EOD, EOD uh, format URL. So you can name this whatever you want. But uh, the purpose of this field is that uh, we will set here the value of the link that we want to be opened through the button. So again, let's name it EOD format URL and click OK. So again, this is under our uh, main data source. And now we are going to double click it and add a value to the uh, value field. So this is where we are going to add the link, which I already have here, which is the high tail link uh, for the um, EOD template document that we made earlier. So let's click OK. Now, once you've added the that field, let's go ahead and go back to our button, which is our open and current tab. And then let's now go ahead and create an action. Let's just name our action open URL. And for that, let's click add and set a fields value. And um, this is where we are going to use uh, the command from QRO. So in the field, let's click this button and let's go to Kadabaru secondary data source and click command. Now for the value, I already have it here in my notepad, which is also included in the labs document. Sorry, you should not paste it there. You should click the FX button first and paste it there. So this means that we are trying to concatenate uh, the custom open URL command, which is the URL, which is the parameter is equals to the EOD format URL. And just to uh, make sure that you insert that field, which is our EOD format URL. So make sure to do that before you click OK. Again, this is us saying that they open the URL of this field, which we have already added a value to a while ago. So let's click OK and then OK. Once that's done, let's go ahead and add a new uh, another button. So let's expand the controls and add a button. And let's go to its properties and just uh, change its label to open a new tab and click apply, click OK. Now for this button, let's do again what we did earlier. So let's create a new action and let's just name this open URL and click add, set a fields value. Again, we're going to use the command from Kadabra rules. Um, so let's go to Kadabra rules secondary data source and click command. Now for the value of this, um, I already have it here in my notepad. Let's click FX button and then copy and paste that. So this just means that we are trying to concatenate uh, the command for the custom open URL, which is a new, a new tab. And that URL is equals to the EOD format URL, which is our um, field that we added earlier. So let's try to point that to the EOD format URL um, and then click OK. So there we go. So we are trying to open the link of the EOD format URL in a new tab. So let's click OK. And then once that's done, uh, we are now going to load the JavaScript that we added earlier using the load resource command. So let's go ahead and uh, go to Kadabaru second, sorry, Kadabaru secondary data source and click finish loading. As you can see in the form, uh, we already have a load JS, which is a load, which means load JavaScript. But, and since our resource file is a JavaScript, let's go ahead and add that into this action. 
So let's click add and set a fields value. Again, we are going to call the Kadabarus uh, command. And then I've already added the value here. So I'm calling the load resource command. Uh, we're in the name, which is uh, the file name is equals to the open URL command dot JS, which we added earlier into our resource paths and click OK. So that's uh, how you uh, add the open links via button. So the the uh, the result of this end form is what I've shown you earlier is this. So you you have the options to to open the link in the current tab or to open it in a new tab. So that's how quick it is to do this feature. You just need that JavaScript and you just need to add a few logics here and there. So very quick and very easy to do. Um, to do and add it in the in your feature. So that's it for lab two. Um, Joanne, uh, are you ready now for, for the next lab demo? Yes, thank you. All right, so let me stop sharing. Hello, Emma. Glad you were able to make it. Yeah, thank you guys for just yeah. going on ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice to have you here. So we just finished with lab one and Kirby just talked about how to add the auto log out feature and Kirby, I sorry, Yesha just uh, uh, showed how to add the uh, open links button. So. You can always go back to the recording that we're going to upload in YouTube later if you want to watch those two labs. So we're now on lab three and lab three is about auto refreshing queries. So like what Kirby and Yesha used, this is also using a custom curls command using JavaScript. And this feature uh, is a good addition to your form because it helps you ensure that the form is always updated with the current data. And this is actually best used with a dashboard form where you always need to display the, the current information to, to the user or even to the manager who is always um, using the dashboard. And also if people are trying to submit simultaneously in your SharePoint list or library that you're trying to query. Like for this example, I'm querying this SharePoint list called my store. It's always good to keep your forms data up to date with the SharePoint list or library data. So the form or the requirements for this lab is very simple. You just need to get the refresh .js, the JavaScript file that uh, our forms viewer developer, Jimmy Rich built. So we're including that in this lab and it's very easy to add that into your form. You'll just need Q rules to, to call that command. So, and actually you can practice using this custom Q rules command using a plain blank form. And so that's what I included in the instructions here. You just need to add a data connection. And for example, if you have a repeating table, you can display that in the view and add the, this is the starter form. So add the scheduled query in the finished loading node. So I'm going to show you how to do that later. Now I want to show you how this feature can be used in a in a real world scenario. So like I mentioned, I'm going to use the, this in a dashboard form, which is an inventory form. So 
So in this dashboard form, as you can see, I'm using the task pane technique that we sh we've shown you in day three. So this is the same task pane flex technique. I'm just using a different CSS design, uh, different color, but it's still the same technique. So um, uh, just so you know, you can always apply that technique to any form solution you want to. So this is an inventory form and I'm just displaying data from that SharePoint list. And as you can see, the form is auto querying already. So that processing uh, thing there, it's forms you were thinking and querying the, the latest data from the SharePoint list. So um, let me show you if I add something in the list using another form. So let's enter a product name. Want to make sure. Oh, apples there, so let's change this. Fresh fruits. And let's see if it's auto querying the latest addition to that list. Okay. So as you can see, the avocado item that I just submitted to that list is already here. So that's how the auto query works. It's really just simple. And so how I add it in my form, I'm going to add the refresh JS file. It's already there, okay. And then in my form logic, Maybe you're already familiar why we're using this form logic XML. It's like a, a central location for running all of our form logic. So we're always using this form logic XML in all of our forms. So I'm just going to find the refresh item node here. And I have I got some form logic going on here. So it's basically just querying the, the my store list that I created. And in finish loading, I have an initial query to query the store, but I want to add a scheduled query to query or to set the command node to the custom curls command. And let's try to write that, write that down here. So it's called custom schedule refresh. So that's the command. And I'm gonna use the data source name because we're using form logic for that refresh item node. And I'm gonna get the X path for the refresh item, which is this one. So right click, copy X path and paste the X path there. 
And another parameter that you need is seconds. So this is uh, the time that you send when you want to when you want to run the query. So for example, I want every 15 seconds the auto refresh will run, but you can always increase that. Then another parameter is refresh view, which we need to set to true just to make sure that the view is always refreshed once the query runs. So copy that and go back to finish loading. Oops, I already added the action there and just paste it here. So it's, it's just uh, a static value, right? Okay, and then, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> that's how easy to add the auto refresh command. So just make sure that you have added the refresh.js file there and save your form and upload it to Forms Viewer. And you're going to see that your items will be refreshed based on the time frame that you've added in the seconds parameter. So that's about it for this lab. And for the next lab, I'm going to talk about a delimited list. So uh, it's also interesting because I'm going to use this the same form. And yeah, so we'll continue in uh, after a 10 minute break. Michelle, let's go back to you. Gonna stop sharing. Thank you, Joanne, for showing us the Kadabra's auto refresh functionality. Uh, let me just go back and share my screen. All right. So uh, like what Joanne mentioned, let's just have a quick break and uh, we'll be back to discuss to you the delimited list and the um, the limit text box characters features. And Patrick will also demo us the highlight of the day, which is forms viewer designer. So stay tuned for that and we'll be back at uh, after 10 minutes. All right.
So welcome back, everyone. I hope you were able to get a quick snack or a cup of coffee during that break. And uh, let me go ahead and give the spotlight to Joanne as she will now demo the, the limited list feature. Joanne, are you ready? Yes. All right. Share my screen again. Okay, so for lab four, I'm going to show you how to concatenate the values of a repeating field, separating each value with a specified delimiter. And we're going to use a custom command using JavaScript again. And in a real world scenario, this can be useful when you want to send an email to multiple email addresses and you need to concatenate their emails in a field. So that's what I've implemented here in the inventory form dashboard. So for example, if a manager opens this dashboard form and he sees that this oh, one product item is low in quantity, then uh, I've added a supply button here that he can click and it will show an overlay um, a uh, plain design with um, just showing you how to apply that feature. So, so I have a repeating table here using default values in InfoPath. So for demo purposes, I'm just using default values here. And my query is running in the background there. Just ignore that. So I'm going to select uh, my name here. And I'm going to try to select uh, all of our email addresses. So Kirby and Yesha can also verify that they get the email when I click this email button here. So what the custom command will do in the background is that it will concatenate the email addresses in the QRULS command result node. And that result node, I'm passing the value into another field that I have promoted in a column in a SharePoint list where I'm submitting the product request. And let me show you where that is in my site. So in my site, I have an item request list here and I'm submitting the, the request using submit to SharePoint list. So as you can see, I'm, I've been combining uh, multiple features here, as you can see. Um, and it's nice because so uh, we're able to, to use uh, different features that we've demoed in this training and also uh, we did not include the submit to SharePoint list in this training, but um, in our April class, we've tackled that topic. So if you want to learn how to submit items to a list, you can go back to that training class and review that. Anyway, so, so again, this is submitting to that list. So if I send email, um, just let me fill this out. And I made this a rich text box, as you can see, I can make it, I'll change it to a different color if I want to. <laughs> so I'll try to click submit uh, or email. And let me refresh my item request here. Okay, Seattle avocado. So I'll let me, I don't have the, oh, so, yeah, this is the one. <laughs> so it's the very end. So this is the one I just submitted. So 
if an item is submitted here, oh, and as you can see, the supplier column is getting that value from the uh, result node in Q rules, and it's concatenating the email addresses. So that's what I want to to uh, to happen here, because I'm going to use this value in my flow. So I've integrated this uh, feature also in flow. So I'm opening Power Automate, and I'm showing you here my flow. So again, you've learned this yesterday, and I'm just I've just created a simple flow for when an item is created or modified in the list. So that that's my list item requests. I want to send an email, so I'm using that supplier value here. So that supplier's uh, dynamic value there is the ones that's showing in the list. So. It has uh, my email address, Kirby's had email address and Yesha's email address. And I'm sending this uh, body, uh, email body as well, containing the dynamic values there. And I'm gonna open my Outlook here to show you. So there's my email. And I think Kirby and Yesha, can you verify <laughs> that you also received the email? Yeah, I re Obviously. received mine. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, so that's how I applied or implemented that uh, delimited list feature in this dashboard form. So as you can see, it's really nice to, to have that feature in your form if you want to concatenate uh, values in just one line, right? So. How did I do that? Um, in the starter form for this lab, I've just provided uh, a sample form to help you uh, get familiar on how this uh, delimited list and custom delimit commands work. So, so like in my form, I'm using default values here and these buttons work differently, they have different commands. So for example, the first button will list all usernames and the usernames are their email addresses displayed in this first column here. So if I click this, it will show what command we ran here in the command field in Q rules and it will show the value in the result node. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> this is already the result, so I think that's it. Yeah, so it's running. So it's using the delimited list. It's the regular command that you can always use in Q rules without the JavaScript. So I'm gonna try this list usernames active only. So in the in the dashboard form, as you can see, I, I'm using that dashboard form. I'm using that condition. So remember when I checked the email addresses of the person, I have a checkbox here like this. So it's, it is a, a Boolean field with true or false value, like just like this uh, column here, which is, is active. So for this button, we're gonna get those usernames which are uh, active. So, so as you can see, the result field change depends on, on the command here. So in our command, it's just using a filter for the X path so let me try to paste this in notepad so oh that's my command there okay so so it's using the delimited list 
command and the expat parameter there. And then you're going to enter the repeating field in your form. Yeah, this one. And the filter is added here uh, before the, the child of the repeating node. So I want to get all users uh, whose value for is active is true. And separator, I'm using semicolon there. So that's what you're seeing here. So we're getting the correct result there. So this time I want to use the a custom JavaScript, custom delimit command. So I'm going to list full names. So that's the command. So for this technique, for this one, you can always use that without the JavaScript, right? Because it's it's available in Forms Viewer already. But this one, uh, you will need the, the JavaScript for this because uh, we're now giving you the ability to concatenate the, the values in the column. So previously that is not supported when using just the regular delimited list command. But it's now possible when you use the custom delimit command with JavaScript. So, in this command, we are using the row path parameter. So we're getting the using the same repeating field here. And we're using the expression parameter and concatenating given name, my surname, and then separator comma. So that's what you're seeing here. Okay, full names. Then list full names, active only. So it's the same logic. We're getting the active users only in here and we're listing their full names. Okay, so yeah, give it a try. Um, the full instructions are always in the lab. So um, feel free to, to follow and practice and um, you know, um, maybe you can think of, of ways on how to, to apply this in your form. And previously, without the use of Q rules and this JavaScript uh, that we built, I think that you will be required to use the double eval function in InfoPath. And sometimes that is really, that's going to be hard to to use. So for some people, it's a very um, complicated formula, especially if you have a complicated uh, data in your form. So yeah, so test this form out, just follow the instructions and let us know um, how it works. Thank you, Joanne, for showing us such a cool feature that can concatenate numerous values in repeating groups. And if you want to concatenate all your employee emails, names, product items, and so on, um, you can use this feature. So it's very neat. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do our last demo, which is... Uh, going to be demoed by Curvy. Uh, and after the demo of Curvy, I think Patrick will join us in a while to, to showcase the highlight of the day, which is Forms Viewer Designer. So, Curvy, are you ready for, for your demo of the limit text box characters? Yep, ready. So, yeah, let, let me just share my screen. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna demo the last lab for today's training. Um, so it's uh, limiting the text box character limits. So this is a, a new feature that we added in Forms Viewer, uh, which is the, it allows the auto running of rules after the number of text box character limit is reached. 
uh, when user is uh, typing. So this is a very handy feature when you want to, you know, uh, to limit the number of clicks in the form. Um, yeah, so this feature reduces the need for the user to click a button, for example, to trigger rules. So uh, in this demo, I'm going to show you this um, starter form. Uh, first, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Oh, sorry, I'm, I need to use the anonymous uh, link in here so that the authy uh, will be uh, executed, the authy view. All right, so I know Joanne already demoed this to you in, in day one. So I know you're already familiar with, with this uh, view here. So let me just uh, type in my last name and also the last four digits of uh, my registered mobile number. So that is 2787. If I, and if I log in, all right, I just received the um, off the code uh, on my phone here. But if you, if I type in um, a text in here or character, it doesn't automatically move to the next field in here, which we wanted to uh, to have. So if I, you know, if I, if you want to, um, so, sorry, <laughs> uh, you need to, still uh, hit the tab button in order to move to the next field. So um, so I'm hitting the tab um, key in my keyboard just to move to the next field in here. So this um, cons uh, issue here is being resolved by using the text box um, character limit in InfoPath, which is now uh, supported in Form Viewer. So, let me just open uh, the starter form, which I've already downloaded in my local uh, folder here. And in here, uh, we have the starter form, the end form, and also the instructions on how to add that. So I know this is going to be just a quick demo because um, this is really an easy uh, technique that you can add to your forms. So first you need to make sure that you are in the Authy view. Um, so this is actually the end of day report form that I, I used earlier. And you have to select the Authy view uh, in order to show that two-factor authentication section. Uh, in here we have the code um, section uh, where we want to apply the uh, character limit in the text box. So this is actually a text box that uh, that we want to just accept one character. So to do that, you just need to uh, right click and uh, click on text box properties. And in the display tab, you're going to see here this checkbox where it says limit text box to. So we want to limit the character for that box to only have uh, one character. And also, other than uh, aside from that, we also want to move to the next control automatically when the limit is reached. So let's check that box and click apply. And we're going to apply the same steps uh, for the rest of the code boxes here. So let's just do that display, click the checkbox, and this move to next control, click apply. Right, I'm now in my fourth box here. Five, oops, yeah. Check, check. Um, And then our last box, the seventh one. Uh, oops, sorry. Click limit text box to one, and then last check box. And then as as you noticed, this last box in here has a uh, rule which says a verification code. This actually 
um, concatenates all of those uh, codes and add it to the field verification code. So after that, uh, we're gonna verify um, the code if it's correct or not. So this will this rules will run after clicking um, the verify button. So um, yeah, that, that's that's about it for adding the feature uh, text box character limit feature. So once you've uploaded this to uh, let's try and upload this to our uh, form viewer instance. So let's go to our text box character limit end form here and drag this form, click update and click upload anyway. And don't forget to use the open form anonymous because the authy view is only triggered when it's open anonymously. So let's try adding our credentials here again. Log in. And this time I'm going to use this um, uh, text me a code uh, option assuming that I don't have the Authy app in my phone. So let me just click that and I, let me just wait for the code to arrive. All right, so the code is uh, 047. All right, so as you can see, it automatically moves to the next uh, field there, 047, uh, 2629. And then once that's done, just let Let's just click the verify button. Oh, it, and it looks like <laughs> the code is <laughs> incorrect. Let me just uh, right, uh, double check 047262. All right, that, this should be six. 2629. All right, let me just verify again. Okay, that's still <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm not sure why this is. Um, Maybe I got the wrong code. Let me just refresh that again. But yeah, the, the point is the text box um, character limit uh, feature is now working in forms you were once you use that um, text box property um, in InfoPath. So I'm just opening my Authy app here. 0019128 and verify. All right, so that's the correct code and it will now open the form for us. So I guess we can still improve the, um, the rules in the form. We can actually remove this button to lessen the clicks in the form and just move this uh, rules in the verify button to, the, to this uh, last code in last code box here. So let me just do that. Um, let's copy all rules and paste it in here. And it's saying that one or more of the rule actions were not pasted because they are not su supported for this selection. So I'm assuming that the rule that was not copied is, is this one, the switch to view. So I guess this is not supported. Um, the switch to view action in InfoPath is not supported when you add it to a text box. So I guess what we can do is replace that with a workaround that we have in Cure Rules. So which is the set default view um, command. So that's basically our workaround for, or an alternative for, for the switch to view um, feature in InfoPath. So let me just use that uh, command instead because <laughs> InfoPath doesn't allow us to add that switch to view action in the text box. So set default view, this is the command and it has a parameter view and our the name of the view after, um, after 
the view that we want to show after the verification code is uh, verified correct is um, view one, which is the default one, the end of day report view. So let's just go back in there and go to the code. And in this action here, let's add view one or the name of our view. So let's click OK. And then let me just remove this verify button here. And um, so this what this is going to do is that once we add the last um, character in our verification code, then it should automatically run all of this, therefore reducing the number of clicks in our form. So we remove that verify button there. So let's click save and um, drag this form again to Forms Viewer. Click update and let's try the changes that we just added. Uh, let's refresh this form. And all right, let me just add my credentials here again. Click log in. And all right, so I'm going to add here the auth code 32534. Okay, so it works because it automatically um, allows us to access the form without clicking any buttons. It automatically triggered the rules that we just added in the last text box there. All right. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's it for, for the demo for lab five. Uh, I hope you learned something in that um, cool feature there that we just added in Forms Viewer 5.2. Yep, so I guess it's back to you, Yasha. Thank you, Kirby, for that demo, which is such a cool feature and make our lives easier when adding a passcode and such. Thank you again, Kirby. And so let me share my screen for and show you my slides. And let's just quickly go through the day for summary of the labs. Let me open. There we go. So for the first demo, Kirby showed us how to um, import a, a reusable template part and use custom refresh command. So this is the auto log out feature that automatically closes the form and saves any unsaved changes made when the form detects that the user is inactive. And for the second uh, uh, lab, which is the open links via button, I demoed how to use the custom open URL command, which gives you also to have the option to apply an open in current tab and or open in new tab for accessing links through buttons, uh, which you are actually uh, using right now in our course directory when you click the download button uh, on the labs, which uh, directs you to uh, a Hightail uh, link for you to download the packages. So uh, that's the open links by a button feature. And then for our third demo, which is the auto refresh queries, Joanne showed us how to add an auto refresh command on form load to be able to schedule a refresh query for dashboards or list queries. And for our fourth lab, which is called the limited list, Joanne discussed how to add the limited list commands to display user information in different formats and use the custom command JavaScript design for the limited list, which is a quick way to uh, concatenate uh, different values um, of a repeating field or a repeating group and separate each value with a specified delimiter. So that's our delimited list feature. And then for our last lab, which is the limit text box characters, Kirby showed how to update text box properties to have a character limit and auto trigger rules. This is a very handy feature when you want to limit the number of clicks in the form. So that was our uh, day four summary. And again, we will be providing the link to this training recording so that you can rewatch those features that 
we showed earlier. All right, so let me just check if Patrick is on or have joined the call. I think he hasn't yet, but um, he will be showing us uh, uh, the Forms Viewer Designer. Um, Curvy, do you, do you know where, uh, what time is Patrick joining us today? Um, I'm not sure, but I guess uh, he'll join us in a few minutes more. So I guess we can uh, proceed with our next slide first before. For the key takeaways. All right, thanks for the update, Kirby. So, all right, let's first go ahead with our takeaways for the week. So, um, before uh, Patrick showcases the forms we are designer, we would like to ask what were your takeaways for the week? Did you see anything that inspired you? Did you learn anything new? And what was your most major takeaway for the week? So, um, let me go around the table and if you don't mind, I'll be calling your names. Um, so let's go first with Emma. Hi, Emma. Thank you for joining us today. Hello. Yeah. So overall, I had a terrific time. I always have a lot of fun, you know, participating in these demos. Um, I learned a lot of new stuff, I, especially today. I popped in around when we were reviewing the auto refresh queries. I was able to see in full the last three demos. I had not seen them before. So I would say that while I've, I have a passing familiarity with the other subjects that we touched upon this week, those last three were totally new to me and they're really exciting features for me. I know in particular, we're really looking forward to the limit text box character functionality and the concatenating values from the repeating tables. So that was really awesome. Thanks, Emma, for your uh, feedbacks. And um, the new features that we showed uh, earlier today is really easy to apply. As you can see, we just applied it in just five to 10 minutes. So really you can do that to your forms in just minutes. So. Uh, which are very great features really to apply in your, your form. So um, let's go ahead and call on Jelin. Hi, Jelin. How are you? Thanks for joining us today. Oh, hi. Um, I'm good. Uh, so my main takeaway from the entire uh, training sessions, um, we are, our version of the application is 2.3. So we are very behind. Um, so a lot of these features, um, one of the key things I do look forward to using is the, I believe you went over it yesterday, was the approval. Um, it's as far as like the workflows, because we don't have that in one of the main forms that we use for the organization. And then as far as like some of the features you showed today, I, I was aware of like the uh, character limitations and stuff, but um, there are just a lot more rules and um, features that we will be able to use once we upgrade our application. Um, so I think, um, it's going to take a lot of time because we are going to create new forms to replace um, existing ones as well as uh, forms that are still manually done. They're not in any system. So I think uh, there will be a lot of requests that come uh, through our department to have new forms built. Um, once we roll out the main one with the features that um, you showed us this week. Yeah, thank you, Jen, for that. And you mentioned the the approvals, the central flows, XTP, which are which we are really excited to 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 unveil to everyone because this central flows 
really has so much features in it. You have the authentication, you have the administrator mode, you have the proxy mode and so on, um, which is, I think is very useful and such a powerful approval process to, to be added to your forms in just a quick way. So, and as you mentioned, you'll be upgrading your, your forms uh, viewer, uh, which uh, we demoed, we, we have so much new features in the latest version, and you can uh, try this out with the packages that, that uh, we, we provided you in the course directory. And you, uh, if, you if you need any assistance with, with um, applying those features, of course, you can shoot us an email or chat us, and then we'll be able, we'll be glad to, to help you out with those. Yes, and I appreciate that um, you are you recorded the um, training sessions as well, just to use as a reference. Um, and another uh, takeaway is the mobile capability, because I think um, one of the main forms that Patrick has helped me with over the past, I would say, ten years, maybe eleven years. Um, is this capital budget form that our organization uses and um, the executives um, have to approve them. A lot of times they're fully aware of the content, um, the data that's submitted within the form. So there's a timeline on when they need to approve them. And I think the mobile part of being able to open up the form, well, being able to be notified via email and then opening up the form on their tablet or iPhone um, and approving it directly from there will, will definitely help a lot. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It, it will really make our lives easier as you don't really you don't have to open your laptop anymore you can just approve yes. it using yeah. your mobile or your your uh, uh tablet device which is very very efficient to use uh uh, uh during your daily life so that is a great feature to, to be added to the forms thank you jelen for for sharing that you're uh, welcome. for sharing your feedbacks and again like you said we will be providing uh the links to the recordings of this session um in a new email so i think joanne will be sending that uh the link for the youtube recording uh for the day four and i see patrick is is on hey. our call right now hi patrick Thank congratulations you. everyone for getting to the end of our training class i uh... yay <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. uh, thanks to Yesha and Joanne Kirby for what an amazing job you guys did this week. Really, really impressed. Um, I have a quick demo. Would you like to see Forms Designer, Emma, Benjamin? Have we showed it to you before? Maybe we have. I don't know. I forget. But um, I am Is ready. It the, um, I don't know if you've already showed it to me and Larry, but yeah, you can show okay, it. Okay, great. Awesome. <laughs> Is this a good time, Yesha, to do that? Yeah. So let me stop sharing my screen and uh, the floor is yours, Patrick. Thank you. Okay, so we did a demo, a webinar several weeks ago on this. Um, so it's on YouTube, but we've been making more and more progress. And I'm just going to quickly go through this. It'll take a, a couple minutes. Uh, let's just do this here. So this was, uh, I want to say it was three, four, it was probably a month ago now. Uh, we are replacing not only InfoPath Filler and InfoPath Form Services, which gives you that browser forms. We've done that as Forms here. And now we're working, we've been working actually for two and a half years on the, the designer um, doing the specs, figuring out what kind of requirements, add, you know, which features we want to add that were not in InfoPath Designer, that you know, the gaps in the previous product, so to speak. So it's not just about you know, the, the muscle memory, the, the look and feel of the old InfoPath designer, we want to add things to it. We want to add um, specifically the ability to um, work around the issues that were there in the designer. Typically, we had issues with people creating forms that didn't have well-designed data sources. So these are the, we're, we're going to make that easy. I'll show a demo of that in a second. 
um, not correct, you know, not choosing the correct data type. We also had issues with with uh, customers who could not debug their rules. It was very difficult to do that. So we're going to be addressing that, and we're going to make it easier to add these reusable XTPs, which you've been doing in the class this week. Um, plus, of course, you want to support the modern browsers. So InfoPath doesn't support InfoPath 2013, which is the last version they released. Uh, doesn't support these new modern browsers. They don't have good technology. It's still HTML5 underneath the covers. So we wanted, and we've done that. We've, we support obviously all the new browsers and the old browsers. Um, and we add new features. So this uh, stuff that we did in Forms Viewer, we want to make sure you can design it in Forms Designer, make sure that the data, you know, we can add these, these XTPs that allow you to enable dynamic data connections or uh, the stuff that you saw today, the automatic, uh, the automatic logout, the automatic query, uh, some of the stuff you saw this week with regards to authentication, the, the Authy web service stuff is built in. We want to allow you to, we have a tool in Forms Viewer today to allow you to edit JSON. We're going to make that easier in Forms Designer uh, and many, many other things. So why did it take us so long? Um, well, Microsoft keeps pushing back the date of the end of life. Uh, that's the first reason. We originally had them announce in January 2014 that it would be 10 years, and then they changed it two or three times, and now it's April 1st, 2026. So we've still got five years, I guess, four and a half, five and a half years left for the designer. But we think it's going to continue. It's going to break at some point in the, in the future, uh, cracks in the armor, so to speak. We've seen a couple things that have happened in the last you now seven years or, or six years since they announced six and a half that um, have, have been disconcerting like they uh, there's a well anyway I won't go into the details but they haven't been major um, showstoppers I think the biggest issue that we've seen with InfoPath Designer is that if you have multi-factor authentication turned on in SharePoint Online uh, you can't publish a form from InfoPath Designer. So the designer has to turn off MFA, turn off MFA for themselves, then they can publish it. So that, that's the biggest issue right now that we have. If there's an easy workaround to it. So that's not a blocking issue either. Um, the other reasons are that we kept kept on getting requests for new forms or features. You know, we want a version that works without SharePoint. We want a version that works um, you know, with SharePoint Foundation. We want a version that works with um, you know, different kinds of authentication mechanisms. So we've been adding new features to Forms here to allow for these different scenarios. We have, we have, um, you know, probably close to 40 people using it on-prem and about the same number of organizations using it online. Um, so there's, there's different ways people use Forms here today, and we want to allow, enable people to use it. Like I've been talking with the the naval shipyards uh, on the east coast of the United States, Norfolk Naval Shipyard in Portsmouth, and they they have list forms and they want to move to Forms Europe, but they want to do it without SharePoint, but they want to use SharePoint with it. So it's a very strange scenario. It's like they have SharePoint, but they don't want to set up the app domain, which you guys have done, Emma, for the uh, Forms Europe on prem. So we we continue to. Um, you know, we continue continue to uh, field these requests from our, our customers, and actually, um, that's been taking a lot of time. Um, and but we've finally decided, okay, well, we're going to give Jimmy some help, and we hired a team of developers in Nepal um, with a guy in New York, very senior uh, CTO level developer kind of guy, and they've been working on with help with Jimmy's uh, sort of proof of concept uh, since June, and we've made a lot of progress. And so with that, I'm going to show the quick demo here. Uh, so we are planning, and I'll, I'll talk about the date, dates in a second, but let me just show the quick demo first here. Um, okay, so there's Forms Designer, and I'll just do it from scratch here. So we've got this uh, demo link, so you can see it loading. So the, the Forms Designer is taking that expense report form that you may have seen in some of our previous webinars, and you see that it's it's actually uh, displaying the the form in the view. Um, it's got a ribbon. It's got the ability to switch views. Um, and let, let's do a couple. Let's do a quick. Um, oh yeah, my demo is very simple today, but 
basically what I want to do is I want to add a new field to the form. And this is our really our main scenario for December is what we're, we're trying to release the, um, the product for the first time we're going to call the beta um, in um, in December. I'm not sure why this is not working, but you can see this is definitely a very in development kind of thing here. Let me um, add a control. So we'll add a control and it, it automatically asks you, well, where do you want to bind it? So this is one of the, the things we're going to be helping customers to do the right thing. Of course, it has it, it added in the wrong place, but that's OK. And this is going to be the version. Now, if I click on the control, it's also going to give me the, um, I don't know. OK, there we go. I don't know why um, the, uh, So if I click on the control here, you can see that um, it's got a default value and a bunch of other properties. And I'm just going to type in the default value of 2.0.1 and we'll save the form. So it's just saving it back to Forms Viewer from the Forms Viewer Designer. We're actually going to call it Forms Designer, so the name is a little bit strange. But, um, and then once we've saved it, we can actually preview it. So this is showing a, a quick round trip um, of making a change to an existing form, an InfoPath form. And we've got some data connections that aren't loaded. That's because the, the test site is not connected to the SharePoint site where the data connections are. So I'm going to just click through these. And we should see the form open with the, uh, the new text box added, hopefully, to the top there. And you can see it does show it with the CSS and everything that, um, that you see in class this week. And uh, anyway, so um, so that's a quick demo. Now that you know we are retaining backward compatibility with the InfoPath Designer. So any changes that you make here, you, you can continue to open the form in the Designer for the next few years and, and make changes. Now we hope to have you know ninety five percent of the features in the Designer done sometime by the end of next year. I mean we're we're looking at the beta for for December. We're looking at um, a one zero release probably in beginning of Q2 next year, so, so around the April timeframe. And then um, we'll be just incrementally adding features like we've been doing with Forms Year over the years. I don't know if, you're, if you've are you seen our Forms Year version page, but um, let me see if I can get there. Cadabra Forms Year version history. Um, you can see that uh, we've been shipping Forms here now since, uh, well, <laughs> there's a lot of versions here, but the first version dates back to uh, version one was 2014. So we actually had a couple, an alpha and a beta in, in 2000. We had an alpha in 2013, we had a beta in 2014, and then we finally shipped version one in July of 2014. And now we're on 5.2, which is what you've been training on. And um, we'll probably release another version this year, 5.3. And uh, the, the version number roughly corresponds to the year from which it was we started working on it. And Forms Designer will be the same. We'll probably end up with the beta at the end of the year. Um, very first of January, worst case scenario, we'd have it at the end of January. And then uh, we will uh, have the 1.0 release sometime later in 2021. The, the beta will be available online and we will upgrade on-prem customers so they can have that. Our goal right now is three, is you know, that one scenario is to, to enable you to add, edit existing forms, not to create forms from scratch. That's not a target for, for beta. You will be able to do that, but that's not what we're focusing on. Our focus is on allowing very complex forms to be edited and uh, I have some other examples of them, but um, let me just show you one more example before we switch to the slides. Any questions so far? Did we lose Richard today? Yesha, can you still hear me? Yeah, Patrick, we can still hear you. What happened to Richard today? Did he, was he there at the beginning? Uh, off today. Oh, he's on. Okay, he okay. won't be able to make it. Great. 
good for him. So this is another um, form that one of our customers sent us, a very complex form. And you can see just by the scroll bar there how long this form is, which is why there's a little bit of a rendering delay there. Um, and if we wait a little longer here, we'll see that this form uh, will load everything. It's, it's a fairly complex form. It's got a lot of sections, a lot of fields, um, images, uh, formatting, and so on. You can see how complex this is. Um, it's still rendering actually. Um, and that's just another example of a form that we are testing. And we'll be testing your forms. You sent to us, Emma, uh, thank you for that. I will look at those today and hopefully by next week, we should have a demo for you uh, to show those forms in the designer. Uh, we are looking at, um, you know, so our, our priorities, like I said, are to make changes to existing forms to allow you to upgrade your, your InfoPath forms using these new features like these XTPs that you've seen, the central flow, for example, that Kirby demoed yesterday, along with all the other features. And that's actually relatively complex. The ability to add an XTP to your form involves the schema, the data source, the rules, the data connections. So it's it, there's a lot of stuff in that. And that's, that's actually a scenario for us because we really know that most of our customers want to upgrade the forms quickly to you know, get some of these new features. Um, and then of course, you want to keep the compatibility with InfoPath. So that's, those are the dates we've been talking about. Uh, we, we're in the midst of it right now. Um, and I guess, uh, any questions, Emma or, or Benjamin? No, I'm good. Hi, this is Emma. Um, I don't think we have any real questions at this point, but we, you know, just want to reiterate how excited we are about it. And we're really looking forward to seeing those forms being demoed out because I think we're going to be really early adopters of this. The moment you have it ready for us, we'll put it to work. So that is music to my ears. Thank you so much for saying that. That's very, very kind, very generous. And we are looking forward. To, we've got a few, um, you know, eager um, eager adopters out there. Uh, Shane Harvey, who is here in the day one, is also uh, raring to go. And and um, yeah, there might be a few bumps in the road, you know, but we're, we're going to get it out to you uh, in December and you'll be able to start testing it probably towards the end of November or the, the latter half of November. Um, and uh, we look forward to getting all your bugs and your feedback so we can make it better. You know, this, you know, we just, you can tell that we've been working very hard in forms here for, for five, six years now. And, um, you know, it's going to be a process for forms designer as well. But the good thing is that we'll be completely unshackled from uh, SharePoint and, and the, you know, the whimsy of Microsoft's uh, project management team <laughs> you know, in terms of their the support for their customers. And so we'll be able to, to do a lot of features that uh, customers want instead of having to wait for Microsoft to not add them, <laughs> you know, and that's what we've been doing over the years. I mean, we've been filling gaps. That's our, our business model is to be a consulting company and help customers try to implement these out of box technologies, um, you know, to get, to get more work done. And, um, and that, you know, Microsoft inevitably, they always ship this Swiss cheese with all these holes in it and you got to fill them. Um, I don't know that that's the wrong metaphor, but, uh, thanks, thanks so much for attending the class this week and, and for being here at the end. I'm just going to stop sharing and, and hand the mic back to Yesha. Yesha. Anything else? Are we done? <laughs> sorry. Sorry, I was on mute. Sorry about that. So let me quickly share my screen. I love Actually, the images you got here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And well, the last slide left is really a thank you slide. So um, thank you, everyone, for, for staying with us throughout the training. And we had so much fun showcasing the capabilities of Forms Viewer and unveiling its new features to you. And we are so excited to see these features on your forms. And again, thank you, everyone, for joining. We'll be sending out a, a, a survey at the end here for you to fill out. Um, it'll be online Forms Viewer survey. It may take us a day or two, but you'll get that. Um, and, and then, of course, the package with everything in it will be uploaded to our, our InfoPath website. And we'll also be sending an email with those links. So any other questions for us before we uh, bid you adieu? Not from me, but just another big thank you for a wonderful set of demos. Yay. <laughs>
Yes. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful fall day, wherever you Thank are. Thank you. <laughs> you too. Okay. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>